grade 12s, I'm warning you right up front that today's examples are easier than the homework questions. So I hope you've got your thinking cap on and you are ready to face a challenge. The examples just present the basic um, concepts you need to know. And then the homework, I have faith that you'll manage. If you don't, check out the memo. And if it's still not making any sense, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll gladly, gladly um, explain things in detail. But for now, let's remember that there are two kinds of equations of a circle. Actually, there's only one kind, but we're used to seeing two types of circles. One, where the center is the origin. Then we have the format x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which comes from the distance formula, which comes from the theorem of Pythagoras. And then if we move that circle around and create a new center of the circle, it will have this format, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, with a b being the center. If you know those two and can manipulate these formulae and apply them really well, you will be A-OK -okay for analytical geometry. So the first example asks us to determine the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius of this given circle. So we can see that this is of the format of that very first equation on the slide. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So straight up, you can tell me that the center is the origin. Now let's have a look at the radius. This is out of the format x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared gives us 81. How do we get 81? All by, uh, how do we get r squared, r all by itself? We square root both sides, of course. And so you can tell me that the length of the radius is going to be the square root of 81, which is 9. Chuff, chuff. Now we need to determine the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius of a circle whose center is not the origin. I'm sure you can tell that straight up we can see that if we write down the coordinates of the center, they will be negative 6 and positive 2. Just change the sign um, of what is given in the original formula. So the center is negative 6 and 2, and r squared, which is the radius, is 121. So how are we going to get the radius all by itself? We square root 121 to give us 11 units. Now we have to determine the coordinates of the center and length of th and the length of the radius of this circle. But this one is not of the format we are used to seeing. There is no x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. So let's rearrange this to make it a little bit simpler for ourselves. And once you rearrange it, you are going to need to complete the square in order to create perfect binary binomials in brackets squared because that's what the general formula has. So let's start off by spacing out the equation and kicking the negative 9 over to the right hand side of the equal sign. There I've grouped my x's together, my y's together and my 9 has been taken over. Look at how I've left gaps. I am going to fill those gaps with something. And this is what you need to memorize. Let's first work with x squared minus 5x. And let's complete the square for x. How do we complete the square again? You look at the coefficient of x. So in this case, the coefficient of x is negative 5. You halve it, you square it, you add it. You halve it, you square it, you add it. So let's half the coefficient of x. So half of negative 5 all squared will give us positive 25 over 4. So let's pop it in to that area where we've grouped our x's so that we now have a trinomial. However, what you do to the left-hand side of an equation, you must do to the right-hand side of the equation to make sure you are making mathematical sense. And now we can repeat this process with the y's. 
y squared plus 6y. What is half of the coefficient of y? Well, of course, that's 3. And if we square that, we'll get positive 9. So let's add 9 to our group of y's. What you do to the left-hand side of an equation, you must do to the right-hand side. Now we have two trinomials, one with x's and one with y's that can be factorized. The factorizing is really simple because... This process of completing the square guarantees that when we set up two brackets by factorizing, those brackets will be identical to each other. So I'm just going to straight up take my trinomial of x's and realize it's going to be bracket um, x minus 5 over 2. Remember where the 5 over 2 comes from? It comes from, let me get my laser quickly, here. So this bracket squared comes, the sign is the sign in front of the coefficient of x, those two match each other, and then the constant in the binomial is the square root of the constant in the trinomial. Right, same goes for y. The sign of the coefficient of y is the sign you see inside your bracket, and then the constant is the square root. The constant in the binomial being squared is the square root of the constant in the trinomial above. There we go. And now we have the correct format of the circle. So from here, we can read off the coordinates of the center being 5 over 2 and negative 3. And from this, we can read off what the value of r squared would be. And if we were to square root that value, we would get root 97 over 2 as r.